Hello, today is Wednesday, February 21st, and welcome to the 300th episode of Fault Lines, the National Security Institute's podcast that gets you quickly up to speed three times a week on the national security and foreign policy debates shaking up America. If you're shocked, I am shocked also that we made it to 300 episodes without killing each other, um, considering we see each other three times a week here. Um, I'm Wait, Jessica Jones. Let's try, let's try to kill me, just <laughs> for the record. True. There's That's been true. attempted That's murder, true. Murder, true. But, but nothing has been successful. Um, so I'm Jessica Jones, NSI's deputy, ex, deputy executive. Executive Director, I'm joined today, surprisingly, by Jamil Jaffer, a little late as usual, our Executive Director, and our Senior Fellows, and always on time folks, Morgan Vina and Lester Munson. Uh, so what are we talking about today? We're talking about Julian Assange. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory because his name has been around for like 20 years, and so you you might not remember who he is. He is the man behind the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks, um, which for our RAs and interns, they've probably never heard of that. Um, but the website began in 2006, and it kind of flew under the radar until 2010 when it started publishing huge amounts of classified documents related to the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, including videos showing um, firing on and killing journalists, releasing more than 90,000 documents on the Afghan war alone, which dated back to 2004. So huge tranche of information. Since 2019, in the Trump administration, the U.S. has been seeking to bring Assange back to the U.S. He's currently in the U.K., where he faces 17 charges of espionage and one charge of com computer uh, misuse over um, WikiLeaks in the publication of classified documents. He also actively solicited classified information from Army intel analyst Chelsea Manning to obtain these thousands of pages of classified material, which included State, Dip uh, State Department cables um, and other information related to Guantanamo Bay. He has been fighting. I literally had to look up a timeline of how long this fight has been going on because he's been bopping around. He has been fighting extradition for more than a decade, including seven years in self-exile in the Ecuadorian embassy in London and the last five years in a high security prison. Uh, his legal team was in court on Tuesday to fight the extradition. If he loses that round, the U.S. Um, is supposed to be in court today. If he loses that round, he's going to appeal to the European Court of Human Rights um, to fight his extradition back to the U.S., so the first question for those that don't remember this entire episode from, you know, 15 years ago, Jimmy, I'll go to turn to you first because I know you have a lot to say. Um, and I guess and early, I bird doesn't, early Bird doesn't get the worm on this show, I guess. But for those of us who don't really remember, you know, how damaging was WikiLeaks? Like how big of a story was it at the time? Well, you know, uh, there were tens of thousands of, secret, of State Department cables released about the Afghanistan war, some uh, demonstrating, you know, matters of public concern that people probably want to know about uh, and the like. Uh, but a lot actually talking about um, who we were working with in country, uh, nonprofits, NGOs, reporters, journalists who were working the issues, disclosing their names, their affiliations, who they were working with and the like. So, you know, contrary to this idea that somehow, you know, Julian Assange was engaged in journalistic behavior, he was exactly the opposite. He doesn't he has not abided by any of the, any of the traditional codes of journalistic ethics. Um, he didn't redact any names. He didn't try to protect uh, those who were vulnerable. To the contrary, he just put it all out there. Resulting in what people believe are, uh, you know, and not in a number of amount of deaths of activists in these countries, including in Afghanistan. We don't know for sure, uh, but that damage uh, to human rights and to sort of civil society alone was catastrophic. Never mind uh, the the negative impact that had on U.S. national security and our operations, which at the time uh, were ongoing in Afghanistan uh, and continued forward for for a decade after he began uh, his leaking behavior. Um, and remember, the thing about Julian Assange is he didn't have authorized access to classified information, but he did go solicit it, right? Or at least he's alleged to have gone to solicit it. He did seek to get other people to violate their law, violate the laws. So he conspired with other people to violate the laws. And on top of that, he also engaged in hacking, helping people break codes and crack passwords. So directly engaged in hacking, if you believe, again, the allegations and the allegations are proven in a court um, against him that are brought by the Justice Department. So for all those reasons, um, I think it makes sense for Julian Assange to come to the United States, face the music. A stand trial by a jury of his peers in the United States. Um, he can make all the arguments he wants, First Amendment, journalistic, all the whole thing, although it's not clear the First Amendment applies to a uh, somebody who's not an American, not located in the United States when he engaged in his behavior. So we'll see. Yeah. Morgan, what do you think? Or, or, I mean, we're putting a lot of energy into this. This happened a long time ago. Is Should we continue to fight to get him back in the U.S.? What do you make of his arguments that he's worried about his treatment that he would face here in the U.S. in prison? He's a lot of mental and health issues that he's raised to keep him in Europe. First off, I agree with Jamil. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> Second, win. Three hundred episode win. Second, so painful for anyone on the show to say that. I just want to point out. Morgan, you've gone soft. I'm dying I'm inside. Very I'm dying inside. Yeah, I'm dying inside just a little bit. Um, <laughs> second off, 
second, I hate this guy. He's he's been using mental health challenges to cover for his own narcissism. <laughs> Seriously, he, as I said, he's been using his mental health challenges to try to cover for his own narcissism. Um, I mean, who is this guy to play God with U.S. intelligence? Um, he has been delaying the inevitable for you know a decade or more, and the clock's running out. Period. You know, he's imperiled the lives of countless American service members and our foreign sources by actively soliciting and then publishing via WikiLeaks classified inter- information provided to him by Chelsea. Manning, as we know, provided Assange with State Department cables, information on the Iraq war, information on Gitmo detainees. He was convicted and he served time until Obama commuted her sentence. Sorry, I got the pronouns wrong, sue me. So after a decade of this BS, Assange needs to be extradited to the United States and feel the full force of the US justice system. Les, I know you, like, Les, you've, you've ranted on our, our, until leaks that we've talked about here on the show. I mean, this happened a long time ago. Have we seen any improvement? Have, is the, you know, Biden administration and the Trump administration have their own, there's a lot of headlines about their treatment of classified documents themselves within, you know, the higher, the highest reaches of the government. I mean, what do you make of what's going on with this case right now? Uh, well, <clears throat> I guess there's some question in the future as to how President Biden, should he still be in office when this comes back to the United States? Uh, how how he's going to handle it. I think they should uh, prosecute him to the full extent of the law. Ironically, as Morgan was kind of hinting earlier, if Assange had just come to the United States and faced the music for his crimes, his alleged crimes, uh, back when they, when it happened during the Obama administration, President Obama probably would have pardoned him or commuted his sentence. Let's face it. So this ongoing drama is all because he uh, lacks the courage to come and defend his alleged beliefs, most of which I think are total bunk. Uh, but he's not willing to face the music. He ought to come uh, face a trial. We have a free and fair system here. We have a very good justice system. He has we have all kinds of constitutional protections. Uh, even as someone who's not an American, you should stand trial and uh, uh, and see and see what see what cards are played. Uh, I do think there's there's a larger question here in the Biden administration of how seriously they're taking violations of uh, people who are supposed to be protecting classified material. Right. Uh, we've we've seen big scandals involving um, low level military officials uh, where there's been no consequences for the people who actually run this system. Right. I mean, the administration, President Biden is all too happy to bring charges against his uh, political opponent, Donald Trump, on this issue. But he's not willing to hold his senior officials accountable for their failure to manage the system successfully. I don't think we take these issues seriously in this country. We ought to do a better job of it. And you can you can start off right now, Mr. President, by firing the people who are responsible for a system that doesn't work very well. Oof, and the gauntlet is thrown um, on our 300th episode. Thank you. That's a wrap. Happy anniversary, Jones. (laughs) We've made it, guys. All alive. Look at us. Thanks to Devlin Bernie, Claude Jennings, and the NSI team for their help in producing today's episode. Join us again for 301 on Friday, February 23rd, um, our next episode of Fault Lines, the National Security Institute's podcast that gets you quickly up to speed on the foreign policy baits and national security baits shaking up America. We're now on YouTube. Check us out there. We may all be filming together on Friday, so you'll get to see us all just happy times, happy times. So um, if you like what you heard or saw, be sure to rate or review. Thank you.